Hey guys, what's up? Fuller here. Thanks again for checking out the channel. In today's video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of my Intensity BPM distance listener demo that I put up uh, about a week or so ago. And this is basically, I'm going to show you how you can use the distance of your player from an object to manipulate your meta sounds. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to have one box here. Let me show you actually. I got this level here and your player starts on top of this rock can look around, this is gonna be our starting point. And you can see over here on the left of the screen is the current BPM. You hear my little soundtrack playing. Then over to the left, we have our intensity box. As we get closer to this, you hear the music growing in intensity instantaneously. And it continues to grow till you get to the full intensity of the box and then as you get towards this box the song speeds up tempo and you can see on the left the BPM speeding up and also you're getting further away from the intensity so the intensity is going down but the tempo is going up and then when you get to the box full tempo and then when we go back to our starting point we get back to the original tempo and the original intensity yeah, so that's what I'm gonna show you today. We're gonna to show you how we built that in the MetaSound. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna just tackle the music aspect of it. This is a custom score that I made and it's actually really simple. It's just a, a several layers of drum loops and then some original string parts that I programmed. As you can see over here, here's drums. Uh, we, we, we have four levels happening here. Let me show you the MetaSound. So we have one MetaSound, this entire, um, concept is just uh, one meta sound and uh, the level blueprint doing a, a little bit of blueprinting. So our meta sound is um, we have uh, here we have an input called BPM which is going to be fed from the blueprint. Okay, so this is coming. This BPM is being set by the blueprint. Okay, so basically uh, in the drum section here. Uh, as soon as the meta sound starts, it starts playing these. Um, and then what it's doing is I have four individual wave players all playing at the same time. Each one is playing a different level of intensity. So for example, here's level one, kind of mellow. Then over here we have level two. So you can hear the kick come in and it starts building a little bit. Over here we have level three. So there's a little more happening. And then finally over here, we have level four. So that's the big one. Now, something uh, to consider, something to consider is that all four of these tracks I made uh, in Logic Pro. And so I made them knowing that I wanted four different levels. So I made a eight bar loop and I did four different intens intensity levels. And then I bounced that, that those as loops. And you can see here, when you start the meta sound, these just continue to loop. Then what we're doing, we'll look at this in a minute. Then what we're doing is we're bringing the, all of these over to a mixer and I've set up four dynamic levels of mixing. So over here, I have four levels of mixing and then this is just a mixer. So this controls level one, this controls level two, three, four, et cetera. And then the sums out into a summing mixer and it's mixed down here with strings. And the strings, we're doing the same exact concept. All of this is duplicated down here by the strings as well. So we have four different levels of in string intensity. Uh, and so let, let me just listen through these real quick. So we got uh, strings level one, strings level two, then strings level three getting a little more intense and then strings level four and that's it so again I, I I made these just as these aren't complicated I just made these to demo this out but you could do this with a full song and it'd be incredible uh, and which I do in some future videos but you know I have more layers of stuff going on bass and things like that but for this we're just doing drums and strings just to show you what you can do with the meta sound so we essentially we hit play and then both these levels are going and this tempo is going to speed up and slow down based on what tempo it's fed. That's the original tempo there. 
that's 140. Now you get a little bit of artifacting, but that's common because we're changing the tempo by 40 beats, which is a lot. Now, if you don't know how to change, uh, it's important to be able to change the tempo of an audio file. If you don't know how to do that, go check out my other video that I made on how to change the BPM of audio in Unreal Engine. But basically, it's a simple formula here, uh, and here it is over here. So you, you, you take the new BPM and divide it by the base BPM. The base BPM is the tempo of the original audio file. So all these drums, all these strings were recorded at the base tempo, which for this project was 120. So you take the new BPM, divide it by base. You take that number, you convert it to frequency uh, multiplier to semitone, and then you bring that out into the pitch shift node of your wave. What that does is that speeds up the meta sound, the, the audio file based on the new tempo. However, you have to compensate for that too because by speeding that up, it actually changes the pitch. So what you do is you come back here you multiply that same number by the inverse, negative one, and then you bring that out to a delay pitch node from the audio, which brings that back down to pitch, which enables you to speed up and slow down the audio. If you wanna learn how to do that in depth, go check out my other video. Um, and that's it, and then it comes out here and it mixes the sounds together, um, and you can balance that however you want. But the important thing is this right here, the dynamic mixing. So what we're doing is we're taking the distance of your pawn from the obstacle and we're using that to cross fade these levels in real time. And the way we're doing this is level one is full volume. As you get closer to level two, this one goes down and this one comes up. As you get closer to level three, this one goes down and this one goes up. And that's how we get real time cross fades. So it's happening instantly in time. So you're not only getting the distance locator, but you're getting the real time reaction of the soundtrack, which is super effective and really cool. Now we are feeding these numbers from a timeline in the blueprint because that was, I thought the most efficient way to do it. So we're gonna look at how we do that. Okay, so there's our meta sound set up, pretty simple. If you wanna know more about meta sounds, you can check out my videos on meta sounds. So now let's look at the level blueprint. This is not very complicated. What I have happening here is I have on begin, uh, begin play, I have animations of the spheres. So you can see those spheres are rotating and fi they're on fire. That's not necessary, but I thought it adds to the action. So I have all that. That's not important, but you can kind of take a look at it. This is kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial, but you add the moving component and add an emitter and you're good to go. Then coming off of that, and this is really important, we are setting the BPM uh, and we're spawning the meta sound. So we are setting the global BPM, the base BPM to 120. And the reason I put this in here is because you might want to use different audio files later and you might want to change the base tempo of this. So, so this has to be set to whatever your audio files are. Um, in this case, the drums and the strings that I recorded. So this information, after it sets the BPM variable over here, it creates uh, this 2D sound, which is the meta sound, MS drums. That's the meta sound we were just looking at. Then it stores this as a variable called MS drums playing, uh, just meta sounds uh, drums playing, which is right here. This is a variable of audio component. And I just did that so we can reference that later in the level blueprint. So that all happens on begin and play. So we're setting the BPM and we're spawning, we're creating that meta sound and we're storing that meta sound as a variable so we can tell it to do things. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and this is the fun part. So we have an event tick, which we don't normally use the event tick unless we have to. In this case, we kind of have to because we're tracking real time distance of your pawn which is in the world and is the distance is constantly changing. So um, we're using the event tick on this and this is our, our this is how we find the distance. So what we're doing is we have these two cubes. We have this cube here called intensity and we have this cube here called cube tempo. What we're doing is we are getting, we're, first of all, we're gonna create this variable called intensity level. And we're gonna set this based on the distance to, from the cube to my player pawn. So that's gonna calculate the distance of the player to that cube. And then that distance is gonna be set in this variable called intensity level. We are also gonna do the same thing with the tempo cube. And we're setting this distance 
to the variable called tempo level. So now we can access the tempo level and the intensity level, which is basically just a float, which is a distance of the pawn from the box. Now keep in mind, as you go towards the intensity, you're going further away from the BPM. And as you go, go closer to the BPM, you're going further away from the intensity. So it's kind of like triangulated, which is why we need two separate values. Then we're gonna convert this distance, okay? So we got this float called tempo level. We're gonna, first, first of all, we're going to um, map this range. So the range from where you start, which is about right here, all the way to intensity, that range can be anywhere from about 5,000 to 185. 185 means you're pretty much right on the object and 5,000 is about where you start. So I wanted to, any distance between that, we're gonna map that from zero to one. So no matter how far you are, it's gonna divide that and, and give you the ratio between zero to one. So if you're right up on the cube, it's zero. If you're way far, or if you're right up on the cube, it's one, full volume. And if you're way far away, it's zero. Okay, now what are we gonna do with those numbers? We're gonna take these two numbers and we're gonna make a timeline out of them. And this is where it gets real powerful with Metasounds because in a timeline you can create almost anything you want. So what we're gonna do is let's look at the intensity, okay? So we're gonna make this timeline over here, which you just right click create timeline. And inside the timeline, we have two curves, or actually, I'm sorry, we have four curves. And it's no coincidence that these four curves are also the same amount of intensity levels we have. So as you see here, level one, two, three, and four. And we have the BPM one. So level one basically says, when you're at zero, okay? So when this number is at zero, or actually this number, when this number is at zero, the time of the timeline is here. And the value here is one. So when this is at zero, so when you're furthest away, the intensity level is one. And then when you get to um, about here, and the, we're using time, but this isn't really necessarily time. We, we basically divided one second into zero to one range. So between this distance and here, you're at one. And then as you start to get to this distance, right here, which is one fourth of the way through, it drops down to uh, zero. So you see the value here. So here, from here to here, full volume, one, and then from here to here, it's dropping to zero. And then once you get past this point, this stays at zero. Now level two, you'll see is zero to zero, and then as level one is coming down, level two is going up. And then that stays full volume until level three comes in. Level three starts going down, or level two starts going down, level three starts going out. So what this is doing, this is creating a super smooth, perfect crossfade between level two and level three. And then so that's how you hear that seeming, that seamless flow of energy from the drum track or the string track. Same here, and then level three starts going down, level four starts going up, and level four stays up as far as you are to the cube. Now, each of those timelines, okay, so each of these timeline tracks come out individually. So we got level one, level two, level three, level four. So what we're doing now is we're feeding those informations, those floats to the meta sound. As you can see here, this is a meta sound input, level one, level two, level three, level four. It's feeding from this timeline. So level one goes into float level one. So as level one changes, this changes. So full volume one, as it gets closer to zero, it starts going down, the, the other one starts coming up, one goes all the way down, two is all the way up. So that's how we built these crossfades. And the, what's great about this is no matter where you're at, it's seamlessly gonna crossfade into the next dynamic level. So that's how we um, feed it. Now, keep in mind when you're using the set float parameters, you gotta reference a target, and that's where that MSN, that MS drum playing variable comes in, because you can drag that in here, get variable, and you can set that as the target. So we are targeting this same meta sound that we spawned at the beginning up here and stored in that variable, now we're targeting it. We're doing the same thing with the BPM parameter, except 
we only have one timeline. So we're clamping this value, we're coming in here, we have one timeline. At zero, it is at 120, one, and this is what's great about the float track in the timeline, you can justify that. You could make that, you could say zero to one is 120 beats to 200 beats, or you could say zero to one is 120 beats to 125 beats, so it'd be less of a change. That's what's great about the timeline. So we go all the way up to 175. So at one, at one, you're at 175. So what we're doing is we're actually changing the time, the BPM anywhere between 120 to 175 based on the distance calculated here, which is clamped from 185, 5800 to zero to one. Then we are sending that, you see this says BPM. We're not using this BPM because I wanted to separate them into two different timelines. Um, so this one we could technically, um, we could just delete this track here and that would clean that up a little bit. So now you'll see that, uh, that that's gone now from here. This is the BPM here. So this BPM is coming out and it's feeding the same meta sound, okay? We just pulled in another variable. You could have just fed it from this one if you wanted, but I just put another variable to keep it a little bit cleaner. We're feeding this into the float. We're feeding the float into the BPM parameter. Now, if we go back here, we look at our meta sound. Remember, over here, we created this input called BPM. So as this timeline adjusts, it changes the BPM. The meta sound does the math and adjust the audio based on the tempo. Now, one thing to consider, notice on the timeline, I'm not playing the timeline, because if you play the timeline, it'll just play it from wherever it is. If you play it from the start, it'll always play it from the beginning. What we're doing is we're using this distance here, okay? We're setting the distance on the event tick, but then we're also setting the new time. So when you set a new time in the timeline, it jumps to that. So if your distance is here, it automatically jumps to there. So what we're doing is we're using the event tick to set the timeline. Where do we set it at? We set it at wherever the pawn player distance is. And so when you do that, you get a nice smooth transition. So again, we have our pawn here. Over here, we can start getting faster. See the float going up and how smooth it is total seamless real-time reaction. Now let's go over to intensity. You hear the strings and drums come up until we're all the way over here. Now, a um, couple things about this. Okay, so the layout's not that complicated, but here's something you have to consider. The reason this works so well is because when I composed this music, I composed it with this in mind. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So when I was making the music, I made it in a way that would allow for really good seamless transitions. This is why it's important if you're a musician or, or you're a composer and you're trying to get into the gaming industry and you wanna make music for games, there's a lot more to making game music than just making a track. You can see from this the amount of power you have these are, I, I literally, I have like eight basic loops, really two basic loops and four different intensity levels. But I made them in a way that they're very complementary. So level four of the drums and strings are complementary and they transition well into level three, which transitions well into level two. I mean, you could jump from level one to level four and it'd still work, but I built this in a way that would gradually increase. And so as a composer, it's really advantageous to you to learn how the game engines work because it changes your mindset. And so instead of just writing music that you like, you can write music that you know will be able to be programmed very well to work well with the game. It's all about gameplay, it's all about the story, it's all about integrating the two together. So if you're a composer and you're learning the Unreal Engine, you're on a really good track. And to be able to know the technical side of audio programming is very powerful if you're a composer. And so uh, that's why I wanted to show you this video. I hope that it was helpful. I hope you learned some stuff. In our next video, we're gonna look at our uh, Halloween theremin and how we made that work. So thanks for checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment as well. It really helps me out, helps the channel out, and we'll see you in the next video.